Hey guys, Mark here, and today we're gonna to be transforming this 2012 MacBook Pro into a portable video editing machine. Let's jump in. This is a baseline mid-2012 MacBook Pro. It has a dual-core 2.5 GHz i5 processor and 4 GB of RAM as well as a 500 GB hard drive. In its present state, it's a machine that would be difficult to edit even 1080p footage on, but we're going to change that. The mid-2012 version of this MacBook Pro was the last MacBook Pro that you could upgrade. In the late 2012 MacBook Pro, Apple actually soldered the RAM to the board and made it very difficult to upgrade any of the internals. Initial tests of the laptop by 2018 standards were far from amazing. The boot time with the internal hard drive was very slow. It took a minute and 20 seconds just for this thing to show me the login screen. Applications were also very slow to open and performance in programs like Final Cut Pro and After Effects and even Premiere Pro was far from amazing. So let's fix that. The biggest upgrade we can make to the general speed of the machine is the SSD. By replacing the 500 gigabyte hard drive with a 500 gigabyte SSD, we should see the boot time and the time it takes for applications to open cut in half. For the performance of programs like Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, we need more RAM. I'm gonna put two eight gigabyte DDR3 sticks in here for a total of 16 gigabytes. Any more than this would be overkill for our little dual core i5 processor, and I got a feeling we're gonna get bottlenecked by that processor anyway. To get into the MacBook in the first place, we need a screwdriver with two different bits. The first is a regular Phillips head, but the second is a special pentalobe bit that Apple created, presumably to stop people like me from getting in and messing around with their internals. Once we're in, I'll unplug the battery and replace the hard drive with the SSD. I've already cloned the hard drive onto the SSD, so it's pretty much just plug and play now. It's actually surprisingly easy to replace both the SSD and the RAM modules in these MacBook Pros. For the RAM, you pretty much just have to pop the modules up and out. Simple as that. So now that we've replaced our hard drive with an SSD and our meager four gigabytes of RAM with 16, let's see what changed. The first thing to note is that the boot time is extremely fast. It took about 16 seconds to boot with the SSD versus the minute and 20 seconds it took beforehand. Applications also open in lightning fast. With programs like Final Cut Pro opening in a few seconds and Chrome opening almost instantly, this is the kind of performance that I'd like to see out of a 2018 laptop. But I have one more challenge for the MacBook. I bought this machine to do some light video editing on the go, so let's see if it can handle 4K footage from my A6300. Unsurprisingly, it did very well in Final Cut Pro. I can scrub through the timeline flawlessly and playback is smooth and uninterrupted in 4K. Final Cut Pro is very well optimized for the Mac platform, so this kind of performance with an i5 and 16 gigabytes of RAM is kind of to be expected. I did a one minute 4K render with a few cuts, effects, and transitions, and it handled it fairly well with a render time of two minutes and 35 seconds. Compared to the three minutes and 57 seconds of the non-upgraded MacBook Pro, that's a pretty good result. I was monitoring the CPU and RAM usage during the render and it looks like our little i5 maxed out while our RAM usage was around nine gigabytes. If you're gonna buy this version of the MacBook, it might be worth your while to get the i7 version to get a little more performance in those editing programs. Unfortunately, I didn't have as much luck in Premiere Pro. Scrubbing was pretty much impossible and playback was jumpy and it just really didn't work at all. I didn't even bother doing a render test since these conditions would make it incredibly frustrating to edit on anyway. So while it failed to edit 4K footage in Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro is still an excellent light editing program and it runs perfectly. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the upgrade and while it was a little costly at around 300 bucks, it's still very, very cheap compared to a brand new MacBook Pro. I paid $250 for the laptop and $300 for the upgrade, bringing the total cost of a well specced MacBook to $550. Not bad at all. So if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to show your support. And if you didn't, let me know why in a comment below. I love hearing your feedback. Thanks for watching and have a great day.